back to the Nutramedical Report, and you're going to hear news here you're not going to hear anywhere else first. And it's really important, and there's even, uh, you did some fantastic work today, by the way, uh, Chris. Uh, let's you. go back and talk about the kitty litter thing. This is not funny. This is really serious stuff. Um, what we discovered, I talked to uh, Jeff Rents today, because I'll be on hour number two tonight to kind of give him an update. But you discovered that they switched from good kitty litter, which contained, uh, you know, zeolite and other stabilizers. It's a uh, desiccant. And they were mixing it with all kinds of different mixed bag kind of as an absorbent nuclear materials to these stabilized containers. And uh, when they switched to, quote, green or organic a kitty litter, it didn't have these things, and it generated methane, which turns all these containers into bombs. Bad move. The problem is it came from a company called Energy Solutions out of Salt Lake City. We don't know all the connections. There was a high-level person like Dirty Harry uh, of the Mormons that was involved, but somebody somewhere made a bad decision supposedly this company being a good engineer should have known better than to use uh, you know kitty litter that would generate methane as a byproduct of just time and degradation uh, but now it, you know what I want to know is if this is a system-wide problem so was this company contracted to do similar work through bids at uh, say Hanford nuclear reactor site ones down say along the New Madrid fault system uh, Arizona God knows where where they're storing on site containers that have methane building up that can create an explosion. Uh, this is pretty stupid. And we know now the WIP reactor has a number of these other containers that will probably blow up over the next number of years because they're going to continue to accumulate methane. And this is probably the basis on which the whole thing blew and caused the roof and the, and the, and the floor fall that caused all this material to get crunched down and then release massive amounts of radiation to the local area and the hydrofracking area around it, which means all the hydrofracked hydrocarbons are going to be tainted with radioisotopes. Uh, americium, strontium, cesium, plutonium, everything bad. Everything bad from disposal of old nuclear weapons. So uh, this is scary, and we aren't getting honesty, but tell me what you found uh, about the WIP reactor and, of course, the ongoing mess there. And this uh, crazy idea that they switched the kitty litter to make it quote more green. Oh, Dr. Bill, yeah, it's actually um, I, I tried to bring that to our attention uh, I guess last week when I found out that it had something to do with the kitty litter. We're talking about is the uh, waste isolation uh, processing plant in um, Carlsbad, New Mexico, and there was a Forbes article, and the Forbes article from one of the staff uh, scientists wrote the article. I'm uh, conscious. And he wrote the article saying, you know, somebody made a material change. And a material change from the normal, what we just think of as kitty litter, they call it kitty litter, uh, is, is full of things like bentonite clay and, and zeolite, all the absorbent material that's worked for years. It's a stable compound. But they changed it, and they used it. Yeah, I guess maybe they went politically correct, and then they changed it to something called green kitty litter, which is not the same. It's a plant-based or a wheat-based materially also used, in this case, to as a desiccant and, and to help keep the mixed uh, radioactive waste. <clears throat> Pardon me, I have a little cold. And um, apparently it could break down and did break down into uh, mixtures that gases would build up out of it and would cause uh, uh, an explosion of a container that wasn't supposed to explode. So I did some, uh, on your... On your um, suggestion, I did some uh, digging around and found that the company that was uh, responsible for making this material change uh, was a company called uh, Energy Solutions in Salt Lake uh, City. And Salt Lake, well, what they did was, see, one thing in the nuclear world is you never make a material substitution without fully, fully evaluating and analyzing the potential for uh, adverse reactions or changes. Uh, you just never, you don't, you don't just say, well, I'll just yeah. use this stuff. You know, right, and you've got to go through all different departments of the nuclear industry. You have to go through the chemical department, the radiological department, the structural exactly. engineering department, the computer control system department. Every one of the departments has to see what consequences will happen if we change parameter X. And that didn't we, happen. We hate surprises. Yeah, this is this is like what I call stupidity on steroids. You know, I, I when I worked in emergency and trauma, I realized that there are actually very few accidents that happen. Most bad things that happen are on purposes. Give you an example. 
you're driving on the freeway from L.A. to Orange County, you're doing 135 miles an hour in a high-speed BMW or a Porsche 911. That's not an accident when you flip and go a couple hundred feet in the air and you die. That's not on purpose. When you do this kind of stupid thing, and it may be system-wide, that's what we're really concerned about, is this also been done by this energy solutions company in Hanford and other reactor sites? Are they all literally sitting around with kitty litter ready to explode bombs or radioactive mess all over the country? We don't know. <clears throat> it's, right, I would have to go and, and do some more research and see how many other contracts does Energy Solutions have. Well, and, and it's easy, in, 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 Jeff recommends recommended, we just look at their bids. If the bid contracts, the, the, the thread to pull on the sweater, the sweater of this mess, is to pull the, the thread of is Energy Solutions in contract with any other reactor sites? And did they have similar going forward documents to quote, make the kitty litter absorbent go green? And if those things are present, you go, oops, we got a problem, right. Houston. <laughs> this is not that's funny. Right. They need, they need, exactly. That, that's called when we do, a, uh, we do a condition analysis and we find something that uh, went wrong, like this uh, container that exploded. You have to do what also is called the extent of the condition analysis. That means how big is the problem? Can other other right. was it just was it localized to a few idiots at the WIP facility, which is the Waste Isolation Pilot Project, which is you're literally trying to stabilize an assault mine within a half a mile of hydrofracking, which I think is incredibly stupid. <clears throat> but I mean, you know, like uh, Napoleon used to say, never underestimate the stupidity of your enemy. And that's what's going on here. I mean, this is scary when you actually investigate these things and say, oh, my God. It's like when we were a prepper and I investigated and found out that none of the cities and towns in any Western nation, any Western nation, has backup power for sewage treatment. So by the fourth day, they have to turn off the water, not because they don't have water in the water tower, but because if they continue, you're going to get sewage in your kitchen, on your kitchen floor, in your bathroom, in your tub, and your house is going to smell like a latrine. Okay. Well, this is this is the same kind of level of stupidity, and it's scary, especially when you talk about the nuclear industry has 50 to 60 years of nuclear material sitting on site. Some of them in containers, some of them in containers that might have kitty litter absorbent that it might have gone green, and God knows what that means. <clears throat> That's concerning. You also found another connection between the uh, energy solutions and Fukushima, which is, you know, this is this is like a twilight zone. But tell us about that too. Okay, well, once again, your suggestion, you asked me to do some digging around. So I went to the Energy Solutions website, their own website, and looked at some other projects uh, that they're involved in. And, uh, well, believe it or not, they were in on the design work for Fukushima's advanced liquid processing system, which I was going to report on today, saying it's down again. It's not It's not running. Uh, yeah, it's never been running on. properly. In fact, no, what they're doing is open release, open release starting two days ago of tritiated highly radioactive water and they have never stopped releasing strontium-90 and cesium-137 directly in the ocean. These long-acting radioisotopes are causing a massive volumetric de decrease in the parts of the brain of sea lions and seal pups. They're killing shellfish. They're killing uh, the, the sardine run is gone. The smelts are gone. Uh, the salmon runs down 80%. Uh, the animals are trying to uh, are trying to kind of crowd along the coast of California to see if they can save themselves from the the sea of swarming death, and we got the ultraviolet lights stressing the plants, the phytoplankton in the ocean, increasing domoic acid, which is a, a respiratory and a neurological toxin to all sea life, all sea life, all animals, right down to, to zooplankton, and uh, all the fish basically paralyzes them so they suffocate, and if you eat these shellfish, they bioaccumulate in your body and make you demented. They actually permanently non-competitively uh, block your cholinergic pathways, and you will become a decorticate zombie. Believe it or not, <clears throat> the zombie nation is on its way. So don't eat any shellfish out of the Pacific Ocean, not unless you don't want to remember where you have your keys, your wife's name, what you studied in college. Those are kind of important things to remember. Back in a moment. Welcome back, and uh, Chris, we have some hot issues we discussed on the break. Let's get into it in terms of uh, these other issues. Okay, well, we talked about uh, uh, the uh, tie-in between Fukushima and Energy Solutions. 
when and, and the extended condition we have to figure out right now are just looking at uh, thank you simply info.org and fukuleaks.org that right. just updated that and they said there could be as many as 500 barrels of waste just that uh, just that whip alone that uh, could blow up that, that, that could blow up and one of the one of the important things that Contis, the uh, the fellow the scientist who wrote the Forbes article uh, said was that this stuff is uh, gets unstable with higher temperature, and you know, right, Carlsbad, so. New Mexico. Well, that gets kind of hot down there. I've been there uh, once or twice down in New Mexico, and it gets brutally hot very soon, if not already. So there, it needs immediate action for sure. And so, yep. what they're going to do? Yeah, have also has the documents about the release of information about what the initial conditions were in the plant at Fukushima, and the amount of employees and and senior staff management. They were ready to walk as soon as it happened. Well, they weren't just ready to walk; they actually did. Right. And so, basically, they were, remember we remember we a long time ago. I think we talked about that. When you have when you have something going on, it's only up to the operators. That's it. The guys in the control room and and you know the ones who know what's going on in the plant, and the rest of the the rest of the uh, rest of the plant, with very few exceptions, won't have much involvement in it. And the operators did stick it through, and uh, they 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 were the ones who got the initial brunt of any kind of uh, well overexposure or exposure. They were exposed quick. They tried to take as many as you know saving actions, but it looks like 90, I'm a little dismayed to read the a figure as high as ninety percent just decided to you know flee. Now, like I didn't I didn't check up on the yeah. Well, know, part of that was that they had contracted to American based companies were the majority of the companies that were contracted under the umbrella of TEPCO. TEPCO is an umbrella company. Their contractors are all American companies. So in other words, the Americans screw up, including the faux um, Taurus, which is to collect the hydrogen around the central reactor site. Uh, it was a faux, which means they couldn't really alter the pressure or release the hydrogen because it would blow up. And that's why it was an argument between the two different engineering groups before. Um, what are the other issues we wanted to talk about in this segment? The ice wall. Ice what's wall stuff, up? yeah. And what's, what's going to happen with that now? Because they, they come up with contradictory reports of now they're all freaked out by what the ice wall will do. What is it? Well, the Nuclear Regulatory Agency over in Japan has decided that, you know, remember the TEPCO is going to build an ice wall, freeze the ground around, which which is, you know, on, on small scale is, is a, a tried and true method for, for preventing intrusion of groundwater. But we're going to do it on... Uh, Putting one one pipe of minus thirty degree solution every meter for fifteen hundred meters around the plant. Okay, that's a lot. That's a really a lot. That's a big. That's a big job. Now the NRA decided that uh, we need to study this further because, and it's something we've brought up before. You could actually cause destabilization of the crust, and that's that's in the article I sent you. It's a brand yeah, new article. By, by, by destabilization, what they're doing is they turn. It's a way of turning Fukushima into jello. And uh, Jeloshima, let's call that. So what they do is they're turning into, they're increasing the water content high enough, and then you get the vibration from earthquakes and tremors that literally liquefies the ground. And uh, the crust, when they talk about instability of the crust, the entire, if you want to call it, Fukushima plant, is floating on uh, kind of a variably hydrated crust sitting on top of an aquifer coming off a mountain. And what they should have been doing a long time ago, the last three years ago, was actually diverting not with an ice wall, but with a, you know, concrete block wall or some other system yeah. like that to actually divert all the water away from Fukushima, so they didn't have to quote pump it. They need an entire wall there, and they didn't want an ice wall. They should have put something much more effective. And then they certainly don't want to have a wall below it, which builds up the water, so it increases the water levels inside those buildings and exactly. in the ground because you can take a shovel and just stick it in a few inches, and you're going to come up wet. So that's incredibly stupid. Even if they had let not building a wall, but a seawall below the plant, so when the water comes through the ground, they could pump it through and turn it from liquid radioactive water to much less radioactive or no radioactive water that uh, if it happens to splash over the side, that's okay because the radioactivity is all taken out and that radioactivity is turned to solid blocks that can then be properly stored in waste control containers that can be shipped away carefully in double-hauled ships. None of these things are done correctly. Everything they did was, I call, I, they must have been suffering from some kind of radiation central neuritis. It just doesn't make sense. Any move they made was massively stupid. 
Philadelphia. Well, ironically, they did construct a downstream, I'm calling it downstream wall, originally by driving piles in down towards the uh, ocean side of the plant, which would yeah, have put it. Yeah, but they shouldn't have put it on the, on the actual wall or the or the the escarpment below the plant because they chewed away most of that to build fukushima they should have actually built it further out so you've got a a a large pool of ocean water that you can actually then play with to pump through filtration systems multiple times to make sure it's not radioactive and it doesn't open and release it freely into the ocean because that's what's going on it's some of these plants are Literally, the water is diving down below the plant, getting into the aquifer, and dumping straight into the ocean, or even venting with steam vents, because it's like a volcano, or like the big island in Hawaii. It forms these steam vents that can vent out miles out of the ocean floor, and they know if they took a mini-sub down there, they'd see venting of tritiated steam and bubbles coming out of the ocean floor. They talked about putting hundreds of thousands of square miles of concrete down there on the ocean floor to block it. That's incredibly stupid. You don't want it to get anywhere near that part of the ocean floor. You don't want it bubbling. What are you going to do? It's like, you know, uh, running around, sticking your finger in holes in the dike. It's like, how stupid is that? I can't believe it. Yeah, it seems like they did it backwards. And so, yeah, uh, it, as they say, I call it bass backwards. Yeah, that's, well, that's true. But, <laughs> bass backwards. You know, yeah. It's bass backwards, all right. Yeah, well, so, they, <laughs> so anyway, that, that in itself, they wanted to get the ice dam all solidified and online by March 2015, but now. You remember everything is just flowing in. They're doing, yeah, and, you know, they're. Well, this is going to. This is by the way going to. This is going to trump what's anything else going on geopolitically or otherwise in America. This is going to trump it. It's making the population weaker for plagues, which are going to come this year. It's going to amplify the drought because they have geo, um, they, 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 basically geologically and uh, geoclimatically modifying the weather so no weather systems come from the northern uh, Pacific Ocean. So the drought here in California is going to be catastrophic. They're now saying it could be the worst drought in 500 years, <laughs> probably worse than that. Uh, it means that places like Texas are going to get even worse. It means that the chances of evacuations of places like Southern California, Texas, and other states is a real possibility. It means that if the radiation does break through because you have a liquefaction event or a major explosion or another earthquake, that we're going to get acute radiation sickness here in North America, and people are going to get incredibly pissed when they realize that you and I, Deagle and Chris Harris, have been saying this now for three years, and it's not a conspiracy theory. We're not delusional. We are on a day pass from a psychiatric facility. We're qualified to say what we're saying about this stuff, and at the very least, even if they don't believe us, check it out. Read the e News, read the other reports, and you go, oh, no. These guys raised significant questions three years ago, they didn't respond. There was nothing logical being done by the IAEA, the United States government, the Japanese government, TEPCO, the contractors, or by the way, American companies. Everything that's going on literally is an extinction level event in progress. It's an ex- it's the worst environmental disaster in human history since the fall of Atlantis 13,000 years ago. Well, uh, Let's just to say we don't need to uh, expi- take any much called conspiracy theory or fiction. Right now, the truth is much more strange. Oh yeah, the, well, than, the truth. The truth is, right now, we are. Yeah, the truth is, though. The, no, the, I, when I refer to that, uh, we actually have isotope analysis of nuclei in Ashurbanipal, India, uh, Saudi Arabia, and Yemen that proves conclusively there was a nuclear war back then. So uh, when I say this, it's not a peripheral idea or even theory. What we're dealing with, though, with these radioisotopes, is in Japan the birth rate is virtually zero. No one in the right mind is having a child by normal vaginal you know, pregnancy. They are going full bore abortion or just sterilizing people or just not having any babies. And here in North America, if this continues in a couple of years time, we're gonna have such high levels of birth defects, uh, failed pregnancies, the intensive care nurseries are jammed. It's going to get crazy, and if you're a senior citizen, you're fragile, or if you have a health problem, any health problem you have is going to be activated, accelerated, and you're going to be terminated as it reaches the nidus, where it'll blow you out of the water. And our government and our idiot in chief are doing nothing. We're calling them on the mat. They're liars. They're incompetents. And the nuclear people that don't know better better speak up because their world is going to get a lot more radioactive this year and next. Thank you, Chris Harris. Amazing. 
the Kitty Liddy litter blowing up story is still going to keep continuing blowing up. Now we've got a connection between the WIP facility and the waste processing, uh, the energy solution. Oh yeah, go on, click the subscribe button. Uh, we need to get subscribe and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the remix button, hit the remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.